Hi, this is Kevin Cash with The Rays, and you're listening to Jim on Bass. Welcome back to another episode of the Jim on Bass Show. We're here in San Francisco with Kevin Cash from The Rays. And Kevin, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for having me. I look forward to talking. I thought you had a really interesting story. Uh, you were born in Tampa, right? And kind of get to be the manager now for the hometown team. So who were your teams growing up? And it doesn't have to be just baseball. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm always a Bucks fan. Certainly Florida State uh, sports, that's where I went. And then probably Atlanta Braves, because that was the closest to us growing up before the, the Tampa Bay Rays came in. But, you know, getting the job to get to work in your hometown, these th- there's 30 of these jobs. They're special. The icing on the cake is to get to do it at home. You must get a lot of requests from friends and family, right? Tickets and stuff. How do you juggle all that? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of died down here as of late. Uh, the first couple of years, though, it was quite a bit. And I'm fortunate that I've got a, a really good wife that can handle it and take a lot on her plate, But along with three kids. But, uh, you know, you try to accommodate, you try to please, because at the end of the day, they're coming out to support uh, the Rays, myself, and, and that's that, that means a lot. And you mentioned your wife and your kids. Uh, I think, are they all girls? Are you a girl dad? Or I got two girls and, a, and then a young son. So 16, almost 16, excuse me, 17, and almost turning 16, and then a 10-year-old boy. Okay. So you got the, the teenage stuff going on right now, right? Yeah, a lot of fun. And it's more fun for me to be in the season because uh, it's, it's a lot to deal with. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been married, and how did you meet your wife? Uh, we've been married... Uh, almost 20 years and we met at uh, school at Florida State. she an athlete too or? No, no, she wasn't. I mean, she played some uh, volleyball and stuff in, in high school, but not in college. We were just college students when we met. And you made your debut with the uh, Toronto Blue Jays uh, against the Red Sox. And what do you remember about your call-up story? I always think people's call-up stories are fun. Yeah, I mean, it was fast. It was a blur, that's for sure. I was super excited, and I got there. I got called up. I was told, don't come in the clubhouse. They needed to make a roster move, so I just went to the hotel until somebody said, okay, you can come in now. Uh, and then we got on a plane and went to Boston. I got in at bat. Willie Banks was the pitcher, but other than that, I don't remember anything. I, I have just swinging and being super aggressive. Do you have your first hit or anything? Is that on display at home or in a special Uh, room? Yeah, my dad has it. I had it, got it. Jacob's Field at the time, now Progressive, and that's what my son is named Jacob. Uh, So we we call him JD, but that was kind of the, the correlation. And I know you played for the Yankees and the Red Sox. You're probably one of the few guys that have a ring from both, right? I imagine that's a short list. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it is. And look, two pretty storied franchises, a great rival rivalry, and just fortunate to be around, I mean, superstar players, to be able to interact and almost sit back and just watch what, how they went about their business. Those coaching staffs, those teams, uh, it really meant a lot to me in the moment and something that I carry with me to this day. Where do you keep the rings? Are they on lockdown, or how do you do it? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm not even sure. They're, they're, they're somewhere. Again, something my wife controls. Yeah. Well, I know you were at Tim Wakefield's personal catcher, right? How does that happen, and have you hit the golf course with him? I have not hit the golf course. I'm not a golfer. I know he's a really good golfer. Uh, was as a player, and I'm sure he is now as he's a broadcaster. Uh, look, it happened. Steve Mirabelli was a catcher. He blew his calf out, and... I think I was kind of the next guy to go up, get the opportunity, and they they said, here, go figure this out. It was pretty hectic. The first game happened to come at the Trop uh, against the Rays, and there were balls bouncing all over me from my shin shin guard to my face mask to my chest protector. Uh, I think he threw the ball well, though, that day. Uh, And the the thing with Wake is... The, the worse I looked, the better he felt because that just meant his ball was moving that much more uh, and what a career he had. Uh, I know you did, you were on uh, Terry Francona's uh, coaching staff. You played for him too. You also played for Joe Girardi, so uh, two good baseball guys. Did they kind of mentor you or did you know towards the end of your career that you wanted to get into coaching? Or? I, I knew I wanted to stay in the game. I didn't know what capacity, but I mean, so much of, you know, w- how fortunate I've been today it does come from past coaches and past managers uh, and you know Terry Francona is he's at the top of the list Joe is not that far behind they all have different styles they get there different ways but I think you can pick and pull from from all the coaches and managers that you play for and then try to mold yourself into that well Kevin I know you're busy you got a game to to manage here thanks for giving me some time and it was nice to see you you got it thank you nice meeting you